Hi guys, this must be episode 8 in my potato battery revisited. What we've got this time is we've got my copper plates again going straight through the battery, uh, through the potato. And then here I've used my knife to push right through within about a quarter of an inch of the copper plate. I've pushed the magnesium tape through each potato. So that's a continuous length of magnesium tape. I've actually got five potatoes there. So we've got copper plate, copper plate, copper plate, copper plate, copper plate, and magnesium, 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 magnesium. So we've got five potato batteries in parallel. And then I've got my salt water car there, salt water and solar toy car that I'm using because it uses very little power. Got very thin wires go into it that come out the top of this tube and then down at the other end goes across to those two bits of copper wire that I've soldered the thin wire onto. And what I'm going to do is charge this supercapacitor from the potato battery and then try and run the car from the supercapacitor. You can see there is a little bit of power in there. The wheels are turning because that's because I've tried this once already. So I'll let it drain the power. And then I'll connect the supercapacitor to the potato battery. I think that's about drained it. So we'll now put the supercapacitor on the potato battery to charge it up. So positive to copper, negative to the magnesium and we'll just leave it for a, a while. Okay, so that's at least two minutes. No movement, but we are at least driving the motor. So we're driving the motor from potato power, but we're not driving it very much. That is a stepped improvement though from where we were. Just have a little look. Yeah, we're getting about one point oh, nearly one point four volts. Well that's ten minutes of charge. And we're up to just over 0.4 volts, but it's still climbing. I'm going to go and do something else because I can't stand here watching this for hours. So I'll come back later. Well, we're up to 0.75 volts on the supercapacitor, and it's been running for 34 minutes. Well, 35 minutes charging for 35 minutes. That seems to have stabilised at the moment. I'll come back again in a few more minutes. Oh, no, it is still moving. Still going up. Oh, 
in that case I'll carry on doing what I'm doing. I'm doing some video editing in the other room. Well, we're nearly at a volt. 0.95. It's been going for one hour, eight and a half minutes. 1.1 volts on the supercapacitor. And we're just coming up to two hours of charging time. Three hours. And that's just flicking on to 1.2 volts. <laughs> Three hours charging, eh? Normally charge a supercapacitor in about 30 seconds. Just coming up to four hours of charge. 1.24. Do you think we'll make it to 1.3? The actual time is 4 minutes to 11 at night. We'll go on for a bit longer. It still seems to be rising anyway. 5 hours of charge. 1.28 just getting there just coming up to midnight there we go six hours of charge time and we have hit 1.3 volts so I'll stick the camera on the tripod and see what happens right that's the Thin bit of wire going up to drinking straw. That's just to hold it in place in the middle. So if it does move, it goes around in a circle. Shove that one out of the way. to negative. Is it going to move? We have movement. <laughs> we had movement. <laughs> that was it, was it? My first potato powered car. And what did we get? A quarter of a lap. If I lift it up, we've got power. So there we go. Summary six hours of charge into a 2.7 volt 5 farad supercapacitor and we actually moved a foot, two feet maximum still running but it hasn't got enough power to move the car I expect if I did that all over again with that tiny solar car that I've got, it might have worked a bit better. But we had movement, so episode 9 in my Potato Power Revisited series, and we finally got a bit of motion. 
we're not flying round and round, are we? That'll do.